Welcome back to my reading of the Epic of Gilgamesh. We are on chap <laughs> we are on tablet one, line one hundred. They summoned Aruru the Great One. You, Aruru, created mankind. Now fashion what Anu has thought of. Let him be a match for the storm of his heart. Let them vie with each other, so Uruk may be rested. The goddess Aruru heard these words, what Anu had thought she fashioned within her. The goddess Aruru, she washed her hands, took a pinch of clay, threw it down into the wild. In the wild she created Ankatu, the hero, offspring of silence, knit strong by Ninurta. All his body is matted with hair. He bears long tresses like those of a woman. So think about this. For a very long time, humans did not have scissors or blades of any kind besides rocks. They had Achillean hand axes, these big, sharp stone tools, but not a razor blade. So how do you cut your hair if you don't have sharp scissors? Or at least a knife or a sword, you know, something made of metal. You don't. That's the answer. You don't. So for the vast majority of the history of mankind, everybody had dreadlocks because you just didn't cut your hair, nor did you wash it very often because, you know, running water. So that's an interesting thing to think about. Um, you know, probably by Gilgamesh's time, people had figured out how to cut their hair. Uh, but by, you know, Ankhadu is this, like, primitive man. Like, most people in history had dreadlocks. All right, nice aside. So, Ankhadu's body is matted with hair. He bears long tresses like those of a woman. The hair of his head grows thick as barley. He knows not a people, nor even a country. So he's without culture. So this is a story about how man acquired culture. It's not necessarily the best story to tell about how man acquired culture. I'm trying to tell a little more sophisticated one. But a more sophisticated one includes this story, because this is the first story or one of the earliest stories we have about how man acquired culture. So, Ankhudu knows not a people, nor even a country. Coated in hair like the god of the animals, with the gazelles he grazes on grasses, joining the throng with the game at the water hall. Joining the throng with the game at the water hole, his heart delighting with the beasts in the water. So he lives in the forest with the beasts. <laughs> he lives a happy, idyllic life. A hunter, a trapper man, did come upon him by the water hole. One day, a second, and then a third, he came upon him by the water hole. When the hunter saw him, his expression froze, but he, with his herds, he went back to his lair. The hunter sees him and goes, oh, and Ankadu just runs away into the forest like a wild beast. The hunter was troubled, subdued, and silent. Seeing this wild man in the woods, he was troubled. His mood was despondent, his features gloomy. In his heart there was sorrow. His face resembled one come from afar. The hunter opened his mouth to speak, saying to his father, Oh, now his father is here? I wonder how that happened. He was in the woods a second ago, but now he's with his father. The hunter opened his mouth to speak, saying to his father, My father, there was a man came by the water hole, mightiest in the land strength he possesses. His strength is as mighty as a rock from the sky. Over the hills he roams all day. He's a rock from the sky. His strength is as mighty as a rock from the sky because God from the sky made him out of her body made of clay. He's literally a rock from the sky and he's as strong as a rock from the sky. We are all rocks from the sky. That's what Neil deGrasse Tyson says, right? We're stardust. That's, you know, they, they were saying the same thing uh, 4,500 years ago. That man was a rock from the sky. Like, isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> like, like we have a lot more evidence about it now that we actually came from rocks from the sky, but like, like, <laughs> we've known these things for a long time, but just think about the difference in metaphor between like, oh, you know, there was a solar nebula and it created into, you know, it's a wonderful detailed story and it's beautiful, but then there's Ankhatu created from the clay-filled womb of his goddess mother. He is literally a rock from the sky. Moving on. <laughs> His strength is as mighty as a rock from the sky. Over the hills he roams all day. Always with the herd he grazes on grasses. Always his tracks are found by the water hole. 
I am afraid and I dare not approach him.